This Week in Engineering, the focus is on transportation. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, the world's trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other videos for the working engineer on engineering.com slash TV today. Well, the electric vehicle wars continue with General Motors CEO Mary Berra unveiling a very large and expensive shift in company focus to EVs. Speaking at the recent Barclays Global Automotive Conference, Berra announced the kind of shift that hasn't been seen at GM since the front-wheel drive X platform of the late 70s. The company will offer 30 all-electric models worldwide by 2024, with fully 40% of U.S. product battery electric by then. Now, the CapEx deployed to achieve this fundamental shift will it grows to $27 billion through 2025, up from the $20 billion planned before COVID-19. Now, these are huge numbers, and critical to making this shift to electric work in the mind of the consumer is battery technology. GM is developing batteries with LG, and they recently announced Ultium technology is predicted to allow driving ranges up to 450 miles on a full charge, with twice the energy density at less than half the cost of today's battery chemistry. Ultium cells will be mass produced at a joint venture plant in Northeast Ohio, employing more than 1,100. GM plans to make this Ultium system modular and use it on everything from commuter vehicles to high performance products, with many interchangeable propulsion components. The company believes Ultium will allow price parity with internal combustion engine vehicles by the end of the decade. The first vehicles to roll out as part of this program will be the GMC Hummer EV and the Cadillac Lyric, with both programs moving to high priority at the company. Now all this change will be good news for engineers. GM is hiring 3,000 electrical system, infotainment software, and controls engineers, as well as developers for Java, Android, iOS, and other platforms. The new Altium EV architecture will be available for license from GM, and the company continues to work on its HydroTech fuel cell technology with Honda. Now, this is a major investment in both EV production capacity and battery production, including cells. If Ultium technology delivers the kind of performance and costs predicted, it's going to be interesting to see if the joint venture with LG remains a co-owned joint venture or a spun off as a tier one in the industry. Now, there's a long history of the automotive industry doing this, notably Delphi and Visteon, but the economics of manufacturing are different today. Will this be the first of a new, more captive supply chain in the auto industry? We'll know soon. A new autonomous vehicle for small package delivery is Cargo. Cargo, a new robotic car designed to transport medication contact-free from pharmacies to care homes, is undergoing testing right now in the UK. It's the brainchild of the Academy of Robotics, a company headed by entrepreneur William Sacchetti. The Cargo chassis, suspension, motors, regen braking systems, everything but the autonomous vehicle-specific sensors and AI, their standard components used in other street-legal cars. The Academy of Robotics team concluded that clever software could outperform complicated hardware and dedicated its resources to designing algorithms that could run on an inexpensive computer. The design includes a custom microcontroller, a digital signal processor optimized to run the company's proprietary operating system, and training method used in creating better AI algorithms. The computer and AI software do the bulk of the computing on board using just a few megabytes of memory to hold the operating system. Cargo uses camera vision, ultrasonics for distance sensing, and infrared cameras. The team designed its own sensor to detect the presence of small children and animals. The AI uses micro differences in shading, color, and distance to determine an object's likely behavior based on previous experience. For example, rustling leaves will exhibit a certain pattern of motion, while feet walking will be quite different. Video information is uploaded to a cloud-based server that conducts an in-depth data analysis and sends the results back to cargo, increasing the vehicle's knowledge base and enhancing its decision-making skills. Because delivery vehicles often travel the same routes over and over, the cargo relies on sensors, landmarks, and memory for navigation. Its GPS unit is primarily used for logging where the vehicle has been rather than helping it find its way. The patented vision system called BioSim enables the car to adapt to new situations with relatively few training examples and minimal hardware requirements. The company calls it a safe on wheels, and the vehicle has space for up to 24 packages and ensures only the intended recipient can receive the intended package. The vehicle's hatch works in conjunction with a mobile app, and the recipient is sent a token or code to trigger the release of his or her package when they hold their phone to the hatch. The package management system is designed to reshuffle packages while in transit, so if the delivery route changes, the vehicle will still produce the correct package. While a human driver will be in the cargo during its testing phase, ready to take control in an emergency, the car will eventually run entirely autonomously. To facilitate the latter phase, the Academy of Robotics built the Command Hub, a data center with an array of supercomputers that processes all the information from the cargo sensors. Now, humans monitor the sensor and diagnostic information, ready to take control of the vehicle and operate it remotely if necessary. And that's it for this week in engineering. We'll see you again next time.